Hi, and welcome to Mr. Fisher's Math Essentials Podcasts. This podcast is on proportional reasoning. So, first of all, well, let's look at a ratio. And remember, a ratio is a comparison between two numbers with the same units. Ratios can be written in several different ways. For example, if I was to look at the ratio 20 to 50, I could write it as 20 to 50 using a colon, or I could write it as a fraction. And in fact, the fraction <coughs> is more useful because it allows us to solve calculations using ratios. When working with ratios, it's very important to simplify them first. So going back to our 20 to 50 example, 20 to 50, both of these numbers are divisible by 10. And so when I divide 10 into both of those numbers, I get the simplified ratio of 2 out of 5. In order to simplify, it's very important to find a common, or a common number that's divisible by both, but there may be some trial and error. You could have gotten this number by dividing both by 2 first and then by another number. Um, but in this case, dividing by 10 was the easiest of those. Now, when we talk about a statement of equality between two ratios, we can call that a proportion. So if I look at my 20 over 50 example, 20 over 50 is actually the same as the simplified 2 over 5, and that's a proportion. Now, we often look at proportions, for example, um, when we look at things like paint. The proportion needed, for example, three parts blue, to one part green is a proportion and it compares a ratio of 3 to 1. So when we're doing this ratio um, we can use this proportion to mix any level of paint to be a certain shade. <clears throat> now let's look at some examples. So engines that require you to mix oil with fuel to provide lubrication are called two-stroke engines. Um, a faller at a logger, logging site needs to refill a chainsaw. The ratio of gasoline to oil that's needed is 40 parts gasoline to one part oil. The chainsaw can hold 8 liters of gasoline, so how much oil should be added to the gasoline to obtain the correct ratio? So we can write the ratio of liters of gasoline to oil as 40 to 1. Remember, it's very useful to use fractions first. So let's let x equal the amount of oil needed. So we can set up the following proportion. So 40 to 1, which is our normal parts, is going to be equal to, and remember, we need 8 liters in our gas tank, so how much oil do we need, and that would be x. So when working with fractions in this way, where we have a, uh, a number that we're trying to solve algebraically, um, we can cross multiply. So <clears throat> we can take these two numbers and we can multiply them together. We can take these two values and multiply them together. When we do that, we end up with the following statement. So 40 times x is 40x, and that's going to be equal to 8 times 1, or 8. So now we have an algebraic statement. Remember, when dealing with algebra, we want to try to isolate x, and we want to do the opposite operation. So if I'm looking at 40 times x, which is equal to 8, the way to look at it is by saying 40 times something is going to give me 8. Okay. Now, the way to figure that out, we can do the opposite operation. So if this was times x, we're going to divide 40 by 40, what I do to the left side, I always need to do to the right side. So these two 40s cancel. 40 divided by 40 is 1. And I'm left with x equals 8 out of 40. And if I divide 8 by 40, I should come out with 0 0.2. So in other words, if we go back to our question, we require for an 8-liter tank, we would need 
0.2 liters of oil to get that 8 liter tank. Let's look at another example. Builder has found he can arrange the work cubicles of his employees best if the ratio between the length and the width of a room is 3 to 2. If the room is 6 meters long, how wide should the room be? So again, we're working with another ratio. Let's make that ratio a fraction. <clears throat> now, let's let W equal the width of the room. So if a room is 6 meters long, let's set up another proportion. So in a 3 to 2 ratio, proportionally, that's going to be equal to 6, which is my length, over W, which is what we're trying to figure out. Again, let's work through this by cross-multiplying. So we're going to multiply these two values together, and I'm going to times these two values together. So I'm going to get 3W, or 3 times W, is equal to 6 times 2, or 12. Okay, now it's just a matter of isolating W. To do that, I divide this side by 3. That cancels my 3's out. I do the same here, and I'm left with W equals 4. So going back to my original statement, the width of the room, should be 4 meters. Okay, now let's deal with rates. A rate is very similar to a ratio. Where a rate differs is it compares two numbers with different units. So some examples of rates that we use every day, number of words we can type per minute, so 60 words per minute, for example. The number of hamburgers a concession stand sells each day. Lumber per linear foot or price of stone per kilogram. These are all rates. A rate can be expressed using the same notation as a ratio, but we need to include the units because they are different. So for example, um, if we're going to look at the ratio a dollar eighty nine <clears throat> for every hundred grams. Maybe we're work, working at a grocery store. Remember, fractionally, we can write this out as follows: dollar eighty nine per one hundred grams. And remember, we've seen this rate before. Or we've seen these um, rates before uh, in grocery stores. One way to also think about a proportion is as equivalent statement between two rates. So let's look at a couple examples. Uh, salmon costs $1.89 for 100 grams. How much would it cost to buy 250 grams of salmon? So in this case, we're going to take and set this up. So $1.89, let's set it up like a fraction. And let's create a proportion. So in this case, we're looking for x. And x is going to be equal to the cost of 250 grams of salmon. And let's set this ratio up. Again, same thing as before. We want to cross multiply. So we want to multiply these two values. So... 189 times 250 gives us 472.50, and that's going to be equal to 100 times x. Now notice that I've left out the units, and as long as I come back to the units later um, and account for this, that's okay. So now I'm simply solving again for x. x is on this side. It really doesn't matter what side x is on. I want to do the same thing. I want to isolate x. To do that, I divide by 100. What I do to that side, I have to do to this side. And when we take 472.50 and we divide it by 100, 
we get 4.725 and that equals my cost. Now if I want to actually put this into a price, I'm going to round that. So it's going to cost $4.73 to buy 250 grams. A local plumbing store sells 100 copper plated pipe straps for $4.97. You have estimated that you require 75 straps. How much will you pay for 75 straps? So again, <clears throat> let's set this up. It's going to cost us $4.97 and that's for 100 straps. Now in this case, we only need 75 straps. X is going to be equal to cost of straps. Again, we're going to cross multiply. So looking at these two values here, 497 times 75. And that's going to be equal to 372. 75 and that's equal to 100 X again so remember I want to get X by itself to do that I divide this side by a hundred that gets rid of the hundred and I divide this side by a hundred my final answer is 3.7275 so converting that to a cost the cost for 75 straps is $3.73. So this concludes our podcast on proportional reasoning, and I hope that was helpful.